guys Michelle here welcome back to my channel and if you clicked on this video let me just clear it up right now no absolutely not I did not know he was married I am not that girl so I debated whether or not to tell this story at first I was going to tell all the names because it doesn't affect me anymore and just let you guys know everything i'm glad i slept on it because it still involves people that i know i am going to omit some parts of the story not that you guys won't get the full story you guys will get the full story and out of respect so and i wrote some notes down so if you guys see me looking down um I'm not reading from anything. I just wanted to make sure I told you guys everything because you know I sometimes, well, I know for me when I've done story times in the past, I haven't done a lot. But when I've done story times, and I'm like, oh, I should have told them this. Oh, I forgot about this. So I just made sure I wrote down a few little notes down here. That way I can let you guys know exactly what's going on. And I know I'm sitting in a weird spot right now. I never sit on my floor in my room. I'm in my bedroom actually. And the lighting is really good today. And it may go in and out because the sun is peeking through the clouds you know it's one of those kind of days it's getting to be fall and yeah the light is it's just really good right here so I am here and I bet you guys are like just get to the story okay let's get to the story so I'll tell you everything leading up to us meeting, dating, and all the events leading up to the end of this relationship. So we met when I was 20 years old, and at that time I was hanging out with a family member. Me and that family member were both single at the time. So one of the guys she was dating was going to come over. And you know how you're hanging out with friends and you're like, oh hey I have a friend do you have a friend but it was one of those types of situations so this guy that my family member was seeing told her that his younger brother was in town he's back from the army on leave and that he wanted to hang out Michelle and him are the same age so let's just see if they like each other so I said sure why not I didn't see him didn't even know what he looked like so he came over and I was relieved because he was not ugly I was so happy about that so we all were just hanging out that night it was cool we clicked he was funny. I kept asking him about the army and his experience in the army and he refused to say anything about it. And I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe because he doesn't know me or whatever. I don't know. I was young. So at that point, I didn't see any red flags, but he avoided any question that me or my family member asked about the army. I let it go because he said the army was work and he doesn't want to talk about work right now. He wants to have fun and enjoy his time with me and get to know me, but he, 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 whatever, he likes me. Oh, he's so cute. Okay, we ain't gonna talk about it. So we exchange pager numbers. Yes, I'm that old. I had a pager, he had a pager, so we exchanged pager numbers at the time. Oh, let's give him a name. Um, we will call him Oliver. I do not know a Oliver, and if you know a Oliver and he's a great guy, awesome but we're gonna call this dude Oliver because that's the first name that popped into my head so I was told that Oliver was on leave for a month from the army now I don't know how the army works and I didn't question it didn't know any better so I didn't ask any questions about that he's on leave for a month okay took him at his word so during that month we hung out a lot with my family member and his brother so going to the movies going out to eat hanging out at the house playing board games yes we did that you know just doing things you normally do when you're young and dating and getting to know someone but very early on y'all I knew that this would not turn into nothing serious I was naive and unwise with a lot of decisions that I made but this wasn't going anywhere I mean he was fine and all and we would say we liked each other but this dude was definitely a player I wasn't trying to get hurt and he had that bad boy persona so definitely not somebody you take home to mama matter of fact there's a word for his kind I'm not gonna say it but you know what kind of boy I'm talking about this was before Jesus this was during a time where I had gotten out of church and doing my own thing so don't judge me I don't know why I got this pen in my hand so after that 30 days he went back to where he was stationed so after that I didn't see or hear from him for like six months and like I said I 
knew what type of person he was early on and so in my mind it was you know I wasn't trying to get attached. After about six months we ran into each other at the store. He said his service had ended meaning he was out of the army and once again I know nothing of how the army or the service works so okay you're out of the army and so then we started seeing each other again here and there nothing serious and he would take me to his dad's house because that's where he lived when he came out of the service side note y'all so his dad had a pet tarantula spiders are not pets <laughs> Y'all already know how I feel about them eight-legged devil freaks. Okay, let's just call it what it is. They are the devil. And now got me looking around, getting all weird. And if the lighting is going out, that's because the sun is going back in the clouds. Anyway, his dad had a pet tarantula. He had kept it in this big, like, tank i absolutely hated going there even though it was in a tank sometimes his dad got the nerve to tell me oh i let him roam sometimes i don't even know what they named him how do you ugh, how do you name a spider that's not your friend no anyway his dad got nerve to tell me oh i let him roam sometimes so after that every time i went to his dad's house my first thing i would look at the tank. If I did not see that spider in that tank, I would not go in because I know that spider was somewhere roaming the house. <clears throat> so if the spider was roaming, I wouldn't go in and they would put it in and I'd have to physically see them get it. Sometimes they couldn't find it. So they didn't know where it was. So it was like, mm, no, we need to go back to my apartment. I'm like, no, we're not hanging out here tonight. No, ma'am. No, sir not gonna happen so even when I was there at the house and the spider was in the tank my eyes was always on it and I couldn't focus on the movie if we were eating food a conversation I don't know I had to have eyes on it at all times and I'm looking up because something a bird flew so that's the reason why I looked up anyway I had to have eyes on it at all time because I'm like if this thing gets out I'm getting out. It gave me so much anxiety and yeah, that I did not like visiting his dad's house. So anyway, one time we were at his dad's and his dad said, so Oliver, did you tell her? I'm like, tell me what? Oliver was actually 18, not 20. Yes, legal, but of course he was in the service. But when you start out with lies, that's not a good thing. But he goes on to tell me that he did join the service at 18, but he was dishonorably discharged for fighting and he wouldn't listen to the officers. He was a bad boy. He had a quick temper. He wouldn't listen to his superiors. The majority of it was him fighting. So remember when he went back to the army after that month? Well, he had to serve time in jail because all the havoc that he caused when he was in the service. It's sad when the army don't want you because from what I hear, they take anybody. So they was like, you got to go. But because of all the stuff you've been doing, you're going to serve some time and then we're going to let you go. So he was in jail after that month that he was here. So because he was 18 and not 20, like he said, he told me he was 20 also at the time we met. I probably, and not probably, I most definitely would not have dated him because he was 18. It's just funny because you're 18 when you join the service and you're 18 when you get dishonorably discharged. So within that year, you're just wreaking havoc. Anyway, so during that time that we were hanging out that month, his brother was just keeping the lie going, you know, and his age didn't come up often, but he was like, Oliver's 20 years old and I didn't question it or anything like that. We both look young. He looked young too, but when I was 20, I barely looked 13. So, hey, I don't know. So me being naive or just downright stupid, I don't know, one of the two, maybe both, maybe the latter, I continued dating him. Yeah, I know. We were definitely not exclusive. He's seen other girls. I know he did. I'm not stupid. And I dated other guys I wasn't tied down to anyone so we have the lion that I knew about at this time <laughs> we have the horrible temper and the quick temper and all the fighting but I ignored all of that 
blaming on my age i don't know maybe once a month we were seeing each other it's not like even dating it was just like friends hanging out if you're bored oh what are you doing okay let's hang out let's go to a movie and then that tapered off and then after that when we'd see each other here and there we'd speak but then it would be like okay that's it you know how you doing how's it been whatever all it tapered off so we didn't make plans to hang out at that point or anything like that. But it doesn't end there, otherwise there would be no video, right? So fast forward um, about five years later, I was 25. And during this time, I didn't see him or anything like that because it just tapered off. We didn't see each other, didn't even see each other out. And it was during a time where I was old enough to go out to the club, whatever, and um, didn't see him there. So didn't even think about him. So this family member that started seeing Oliver's brother again said that, oh, Oliver's in jail for a possession charge, but he's about to get out. And he's been talking about you, asking about you, wondering, you know, what's going on. And he wants to see you again. What you think I did, y'all? What you think Michelle did? Michelle picked him up from the branch the day he was released. Yeah. Okay, y'all, if I can go back in time and pop myself upside the head, yeah. And at this time, when I was 25, I already had Cheyenne's. No, I didn't take her with me to go pick him up, but I'm just saying. He did live with his dad, but he would always come over to my place to hang out. And you know how it is. First, it starts with leaving a toothbrush at my house. And then the next thing you know, dude is living there. Yeah, I know. Looking back on this, I'm telling you, if I can go back and talk to my 20 to 25 year old self, I should have been smarter by then. But anyway, let's get back to the story. Because I'm sure you guys are wondering, where does this married man come in? Me and my kid's dad, we split up for a year. And this was during that time where I seen him again and started talking to him again and then he moved in. So I had Cheyenne, I was no longer with her dad, and then I'm seeing Oliver again. Okay, caught up? Good. One night, Oliver was like, okay, I want to be honest with you. And I'm like, okay, you know, wondering what is he going to tell me? Unlike when I was younger because I'm more mature now and I want to let you know, I was married, he said was, but we divorced a year ago and I have a son. So he has a son. And I'm like, okay, thank you for telling me. Thank you for being honest. Oh my goodness, this guy has grown up and he's letting me know everything. He's not holding anything back. His son lives with his ex-wife in Florida. And I was like, thank you for telling me the truth. So the relationship gets kind of serious, emphasis on kind of. He was having a hard time getting a job because of his record. He would get those jobs from like Home Depot. I don't know if your state has it, but here in Sacramento at Home Depot, people go out there in the mornings and they usually wait until a contractor or somebody comes and say, hey, you wanna work today? Can you do this and that? They hop in their truck and then they take them to work. So that's what he was doing. During that time, I worked nights. I did have a car and he worked during the day. So he didn't have a car at that time, he was using mine. So during the day I would drop him off at work and when I picked him up, I would drop Cheyenne off to my mom's because I worked in the evening and he would take me to work and he would have the car in the evening. Ladies, why do we let bummish men have so much access to our lives like that? Why? Now the Michelle now, I'm smarter and wiser, and I don't believe everything I'm told anymore. I don't play that. So as the relationship went on, I got tired of supporting him, his bad temper, and just so much negativity. I was at the point, I was like, bro, you gotta go. I was done. I wanted to wash my hands of this situation, and I wanted him out of my house. I got switched to days, and I'm looking at my notes here because I want to make sure I tell you guys this story in the order that it happened. I, I'm not reading, I'm just going over my notes. Okay, so I got switched to days and I was a CNA at the time, certified nursing assistant. I don't know if I told y'all about this, but when I was a CNA, I hated it. Anyway, he had stopped really looking for a permanent job because why look for a job when you have food, you have shelter, you have a car at your access, anytime you wanted to use. I was giving him cash. God, Lord Jesus, what the heck was I thinking? Anyway, why would you move when you have everything given to you? I wasn't rich, but I was supporting a grown man. 
And also during this time, he would call to talk to his son in Florida, which, you know, okay, keep in contact with your son. I'm thinking, oh, that's such a good thing. But he would always go in the other room or outside. Y'all, I was really stupid. <laughs> Can't believe I'm letting y'all know all this. I was dumb. So I'm getting to the good part. I'm getting there. Give me a moment. I gotta line everything up. So one night he asked to use my car. And remember, I had been switched today. So he said him and his boys were going to hang out and none of them could come get him. What y'all think I said? Now, the day that everything happened and that it ended, it was the next day. So I loaned him my car and I'm expecting him to be home around 12 because that's what he told me, right? 12 o'clock comes around, no Oliver. 2, nothing. 4 a.m., Still no Oliver and my car is still not there. I couldn't call him because we didn't have phones like we do now. So I was blowing up his pager, didn't get a response back. So for y'all young people, what a pager is, is this electronic device that you call and it rings. Well, not rings. Yeah, I guess it rings. And the number, you put your number in it and you see the number and you're like, oh, this person wants me to call them. So you walk to a landline <laughs> and you call that person. So I was getting worried because not only have I not heard from him, but my one and only vehicle, which it wasn't nothing fancy, it was a beater car, but it was my one and only vehicle. So finally, I guess somehow I was able to get some kind of sleep. So I wake up at eight o'clock, still no Oliver. I was off that day, so I didn't have to go to work, thankfully, because I would not have made it in. I would have to call in, but still my one and only vehicle was not in its parking spot. And at that moment, I was more concerned about my car and telling him when he got back, he can kick rocks because I was done. And it was about 10 o'clock when the phone rang. Y'all, this part I remember like it was yesterday because I had never, ever, ever been in a situation like this. So about 10 o'clock in the morning, my phone rang. I ran to the phone thinking it was him and he's telling me my car's totaled or something. That's the only thing I was concerned about, my car. I say hello and then it's getting a little warm in here. I had to turn my ceiling fan on so my ceiling fan clicks. So if you guys hear clicking in the background, that's what it is. I ran to the phone thinking it's him telling me my car was totaled and there was this girl on the phone. Y'all know where I'm going with this, right? I said, hello. She says, is this Michelle speaking? That's when it hit the fan, y'all. She called me every name in the book. Everything you could think of that's bad, that's horrible, two time in this, home record, that she called me. And I'm holding the phone, my mouth is dropped, and I'm like, what are you talking about? Who is this? Oh, and side note, Cheyenne had spent the night at my mom's house, so she was not there for what was about to transpire, and I'm thankful. This girl on the phone, Let's give her a name. What name shall we give her? Oh, I almost said her real name. Um, Donna. I don't know. So Donna tells me they were never divorced. They were both planning on moving to Florida because her job had transferred her there. So her and the son went first and he was going to stay behind and pack up the house and drive out there. Then he got caught with things he shouldn't have been having on him at all. And he went to jail for a year. But their plans never changed. So me thinking I have this changed man that didn't lie anymore and whatever. I was with the whole married man with a family. So she had said even when he was in jail and after he got out of jail, they been in contact. And to me, I'm like, yeah, I know y'all been in contact because he's been calling. But it didn't dawn on me the reason why he would go out into another room until she, I'm telling y'all I was stupid. I was not very wise at all. But anyway, she said that they were working on their marriage and nothing had changed. They were still legally married and not getting a divorce, not even planning on getting a divorce. They were trying to stay together and work on their marriage because of his issues. To this day, I don't know how she got my full name and number, but y'all know us women, when we suspect something or whatever, we are better than the FBI. When she called me, she said, is this Michelle? But she said, is this Michelle Rogers? First and last name. I wasn't about to let her keep calling me every name out the book because I had no clue to what was going on. And I wasn't in church at the time. And I clapped back and said a few choice words because 
I was pissed. I was upset. Who are you cussing me out, calling me this and whatever, dropping this bomb on my life? I'm about to get rid of the dude anyway, so you can have him back. I don't want him. But then I told her everything that he had told me. I guess we had got to a place where we stopped yelling or whatever, and I told her everything that he told me. And at that time, I had no reason to think that he was still married because his dad never said anything. His brother never said anything. They just kept it up, whatever. And he told me he was married was but was divorced like full legally divorced that's what he told me so I let her know all of this I spilled everything I wasn't holding nothing back and I told her which was the truth and which still is the truth had I known he was married I would never ever have started seeing him again I might have been stupid in my early 20s but that was one thing that it was a, a no for me. So she was like, what do you mean start seeing him again? So then I told her how we had met years ago prior when he was in the service, when he got kicked out. They were married then. So the whole entire time, family never told me anything. I mean, not my family, because we didn't know. But his family never said a word. I went from wanting to jump through the phone to fight her, to consoling her, because at this point she was crying and you heard it she was sobbing and like oh my god I can't believe uh, I, I felt bad for her I, I really wanted to give her a hug and I didn't know what to do at that point I'm just holding the phone and i would never been in that kind of situation what do, what do I say and here she is and first she wants to kill me and then next she is sobbing asking what should she do I don't know but I know what I'm about to do if it wasn't me, it would have been someone else, apparently, because that's the type of person he is. But still, i never been in that situation, so I didn't know what to tell her. But I did let her know that I would be packing his stuff. She said she didn't want him anymore, and she was fed up with his cheating. So apparently, this is something that he continued to do. That's the reason why they were having issues and they were working on their marriage. So she told me that I was the fourth person that she had tracked down through their marriage and that this was the last straw. So we actually ended the phone call on a good note, I guess. When we were on the phone as she was sobbing, I'm getting more and more upset. My blood pressure is rising and boiling and the wheels in my head is turning. I'm getting mad, not at her, but at Oliver. Then I got mad at myself for not noticing the red flags. There's certain things in this story that I am omitting out of respect to the people that it involves. So I was mad at myself for not noticing the red flags, y'all. Hindsight is 2020. So we hang up and I get to packing. Not my stuff, but his. I'm grabbing garbage bags. I'm just chucking things in there, y'all. I did not care. His bags were packed and waiting outside my apartment door. It was about to go down. I'm so glad Cheyenne was not there. Pretty much, he was using me to get to Florida. All the money that I had been giving him for his lunch at work or this or that, he'd been saving it. His plans hadn't changed. He was still going to Florida. And at that point, my plans haven't changed. You still gotta go. And I was getting angrier and angrier because my car still was not home. My one and only car. My car wasn't anything fancy back then, but it was mine and I wanted it back home. So finally, at noon, the front door opens. I grab my keys out of his hand. He's like, why are my things outside in garbage bags? And I said a few choice words because 25 year old Michelle didn't talk like Michelle now. This was before Jesus. So I guess at the beginning, apparently he thought I was kicking him out because he stayed out all night. He said, me and my boys was, my boys was drunk. And so we just crashed at my partner's house. I didn't hear the pager when you was calling. And he said, when I was leaving, I noticed someone had hit your car. I was like, what? I ran outside because I'm expecting to not see the car. Like the car wasn't gonna be there because it was totaled or whatever because that's where my mind automatically went. The whole driver's side bumper and the front of the car was dented in. I got in, it started, it seemed fine, but my car was wrecked. It was in drivable condition, but it was wrecked. I don't believe it for one minute that he was not driving drunk. I had a picture of me and Cheyenne in my car. I had tucked it in, not on the dash, but I had it in a way that it won't fall out or anything, right? And I asked him, I said, where's my picture? He said, oh, it must have fallen out when they hit your car. No, that thing was on there good. Y'all, this picture was secure where it was. 
secure yes actual word no this picture was on there good because i had taped it where it wouldn't fall off guess where i found that picture y'all i found it in the glove box so y'all gonna tell me the glove box opened and the picture just hopped in so i'm pretty sure y'all know what kind of night he had he didn't go out with his boys he was out with another girl and had her in my vehicle and he hid the picture y'all and somehow wrecked my car and then stayed the night with her so we go back into my apartment and I'm like, you leaving, bro. You got to go. I'm going to grab my purse. I'm going to drop you off at your dad's. I actually should have just let him figure out a way where he's going to get to where he's going. But I just wanted him and his things gone. And at this point, he's still thinking that I'm mad because he stayed out all night. I didn't tell him anything yet. He kept telling me I'm being ridiculous and I need to calm down and it's not that bad. It's not that big of a deal. He has partners that can come fix the car. And first of all, when has ever telling a woman to calm down ever worked? I told him about the phone call I got and how everything went down and the true reason why he was leaving my house. You know what he going to tell me? He going to try to give me a list of things. I'm going to call her back. I'm going to say I lied to try to clean things up for him because she never going to take him back if she knows that this was true. He wanted me to call his wife that I just spoke to. She was crying on the phone. I told her she can have him. She said, no, you can have him. No, we, we both like, you know, we don't want him. He wanted me to call her back and say I lied. Not going to happen. But we were yelling. I'm sure we were yelling and getting loud and whatever and I'm surprised the cops didn't come the neighbors didn't call the cops and I think back to what were the neighbors thinking because they had never seen this type of ruckus going on in my apartment I wasn't that type of person and I'm still not so he had gotten pretty violent started throwing things around he had never put hands on me but from what his wife told me he used to hit her and yeah i'm glad things never came to that point with us because he would have been gone at that point i don't play you put your hands on me and i'm done that part i'm not like one of the women who keep staying but apparently you could tell me whatever when i was 20 and i'll believe it he started getting really violent and i started getting scared so at that moment i honestly felt like my life was in danger I did because how things had escalated. So I grabbed my purse, grabbed my keys. I hop in my car. He hops in the passenger side. He tells me he's not leaving. He's screaming at the top of his lungs. And at that point, he's like pounding on my dash and screaming, I'm not leaving. How dare you? What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to get to work? All this and that. How am I supposed to get back to Florida? How are you supposed to get back to Florida? How is that my problem? So as I'm driving out of my apartment complex, I didn't know where to go. At that moment i'm glad i thought about it i have an uncle that lives in the next apartment complex over so i go to my uncle's and i got out the car he stayed in the car he had no clue what was going on i know my uncle my uncle don't play so he's still screaming and yelling and beating on my dash and i get there i get out i run to my uncle's door praying that he's home now at this point i'm in tears i'm sobbing i'm scared I don't know what to do. I don't know what's going to happen. And I'm sure my uncle at that moment couldn't understand a word I was saying because I was like sobbing. But I pretty much told him I wanted him to go. And my uncle said, did he hit you? And I said, no. And he was like, I don't understand everything that's going on. But if you want him out, he got to go. He said, give me a sec. He went to his room. He grabbed a little something and he tucked it in his pants <laughs> and said, let's go. I'm never in these kind of situations. I knew my uncle had protection i didn't know what was about to happen my uncle was my hero that day y'all he was my hero that day and he's still one of my favorite uncles to this day just have to throw that in there and we get to my car and it's funny how little boys back down when a grown man is around so my uncle said to him i don't know what's going on between y'all and i don't care but my niece wants you out of her house out of her life and you got to raise up props to uncle because he was there for me if he had not been home that night i don't know i'm so thankful so thankful y'all so we get in my car and we go back to my house because remember i had just grabbed my purse and my keys and hopped in the car he hopped in also i didn't want his stuff i didn't want nothing that he owned at my house i didn't want the air that he breathed still in my vicinity so we went to my house and he grabbed his things put it in my car and 
I drove to his dad's house. It was so awkward the whole time. He was back there mumbling and my uncle would turn around. Man, what you say? What you got to say? He didn't say anything. You brave and you all big and bad and want to hit people and do all this. But when a grown man is there and my uncle didn't even have to show him what he brought with him. He just was being my uncle. So I feel like my face is really oily and it's shiny because of the light. I don't know. Anyway, so we got to his dad's house and he's getting this stuff out. Uncle gets out and he tells him, don't you speak to my niece again. Don't you contact her. Don't you even think about her because when you do, I will be there waiting. Don't you show up at her door. Don't you call her. Don't you page her. Get out of her life. My uncle was going in y'all and Oliver wasn't saying anything. He was just standing there with his garbage bags in his hands and all around him. Just looking at my uncle scared so dropped him off at his dad's house and i thanked my uncle and dropped my uncle back home so then i went to a friend's house to talk to her about all the drama that took place that day so her and her boyfriend actually rolled back with me to my house to pick up some clothes because i just didn't want to stay there that night and shine was still with my mom so i got my clothes i spent the night at my friend's house and i actually stayed away from home for two weeks because I was just afraid to go back home. So then I heard through the grapevine that he was in jail again for fighting and another charge and he was gonna be in there a while and he was. So I felt comfortable being at home. So went back home, lived my life and never saw him again. So I heard things over the years that he was still living the thug life and was still out there being that bad boy and in and out of jail. Where is Oliver now? And for this reason is the reason I'm omitting certain things. So Oliver apparently, and I didn't know all this until I found out at that time, that he would date underage girls. It wasn't like he went out looking for them, not that it mattered, but if he would meet a girl and thought she was pretty and she was 16 or 17, him being 20, 21, even the age that he was, he would, he would still see them. Well, apparently one of the times that he went to jail was because the parents pressed charges. Long story short about that, he had to register. Y'all know what I'm saying, right? He, at this time, was with someone else because him and did I name her Donna, his wife, became his ex-wife. They did divorce and he actually, he remarried someone else. So he couldn't get a job here in the state of California, but he moved to somewhere you did not have to register or it wasn't that bad or work would be better, something like that. I don't know. Anyway, it was a small little country town where not a lot of people of color are and the person his wife that he married she's a white lady and it's not very diverse in the town that he was in so he went to a bar one night started running off at the mouth i'm just telling the story from what people have told me and from what i read in news articles that's the reason why i'm not giving you his real name and anything like that. He got in an argument with some guy at a bar he was the only person of color in the bar and when he went to leave he was drunk the guy who he was arguing with had a pistol and beat him with it and they took him somewhere and left him to die oliver did pass away and i will not be telling that portion of the story because it's still an open case it's been years so he was cremated and he had a memorial here in sacramento parents surprisingly wanted me there so yeah that was awkward so yeah you guys that's how i unknowingly met and dated a married man yeah like i said had i known none of that would have never happened it would happen with somebody else but not with me because i'm not about that life i don't mm -mm, nope i got some kind of morals my mama taught me well on that one so anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up. Don't be too hard on my young self in the comments. Don't be too hard on me. I know, I know, I already know. Whatever you're gonna say, I already know. I know now, I didn't know then. So anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm. <laughs>